try to find a balance with the breath. Not too long, not too short, not too heavy, not too light. And how do you know when you find a balance? It feels good. And how do you know if it really feels good, if it's good enough? That you have to observe. And you have to learn how to trust your powers of observation. And the only way you can trust them is to keep exercising them. This is why we call this practice. You do it again and again and again and get a better and better sense of what works, what doesn't work, what qualifies as working and not working. It's not like school where a teacher can come over and look at your work and say, well, that, that's up to standard, that's not up to standard. Here there's no one looking over your shoulder to say, that breath is good enough, that breath is not good enough. You've got to do the observing. This place is all the responsibility on you. No one else can come in and save you from bad breaths. If they can't even save you from bad breaths, how can anyone else come and save you from samsara? It's something each person has to do for him or herself. You have to develop your powers of observation. Because everything in the path is and involves a question of balance. Extremes are easy. Balance is hard. Because balance requires that you observe, that you be responsible for your observations. and that you have to learn how to refine them. With extremes, you just keep running, running, running in the same direction. You don't have to observe anything at all, just keep running. But the question is, are you getting good results? This is why you can't depend on just a technique to take you where you want to go. You can't just blindly follow the technique. You've got to watch. What are the results? Are they working? If they're not working, you've got to change. How do you know if they're not working? Sometimes you have to watch for a long, long time. And there's no expiry date written on the technique saying, well, you do this and within five days, in you know, five days you don't get results and you've got to change. Sometimes the problem is not with the technique, it's simply that you're not following it carefully enough. Other times the technique is not right for you. And again, you're the one who has to decide whether you've put in enough effort or not. And even when you find a technique that's congenial, then there's still an element of balancing. Concentration does require some thought. It's not that you try to keep the mind from thinking or forbid it from thinking. You have to think about the object. You have to evaluate the object. Evaluate how the object and the mind are going along, getting along together. And if not getting along, what you can do to change it? For the breath. Not only the question of how long or short or heavy or light the breath is, but there's also the question of where you're focusing. There's a question of how you're conceiving the breath. These are things you have to be able to adjust. and get a sense of just right. But then there are times when adjusting is getting in the way. You just want to sit very, very still and watch. That too is a kind of doing. That too is a way of learning. What happens when you just get very, very still? So there's a time and place for thinking, and there's a time and place for stillness. There's a time and place for desire, and there's a time and place for abandoning desire. And there are no clear, hard and fast rules about what those times and places are. That's where your own powers of observation, your own sensitivity has to come in. 
and one of the qualities of a noble person, a person who's on the noble path, is he has a sense of time. In other words, when it's appropriate to be involved with other people, when it's appropriate to go off and be alone. This is on the external level. We know that the Buddha praises solitude, but he also praises the ability for people to get along together and to know what it means to get along together. And again, there are no hard and fast rules. You have to get a sense of this. This is one of the problems of practicing here in a culture where Buddhism is still brand new. In cultures where it's been around for a time, people over time have gained a sense of the right time and place, what's, what's a proper balance. You live around those people and you begin to pick up their sense of balance as well. This is something I had to learn over and over again with the John Fu and what was the right time and place to talk, what was the time and place not to talk. When was the time to search him out? When was the time to give him some space? That's on the external level. Then there was the question of time and place in your own meditation. When is the time to adjust and evaluate? When is the time to sit and watch? When is the time to think? When is the time not to think? As he said, people tend to fall into two categories, those who think too much, those who don't think enough. If you find yourself the type of person who thinks too much, you've got to develop the skill for not thinking. In other words, if you see that your thought processes are just spinning out of control, you have to be able to cut, 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 cut them. Not so that you ultimately will just stop thinking altogether, but you have that skill of learning how to stop when you need to. And then finding the point of balance, when to think, when not to think. As for people who don't think too much, you've got to work at observing things, ask questions. Try to look all around an issue. One way to get started is, is this really true? Do I know if it's really true? What if the opposite were true? This is one of John Lee's favorite questions. You take your insight and you turn it around. Things you believe, this has got to be true, this has to be the way it is. Well, turn it around, turn it inside out. Suppose the opposite were true, what would that mean? That way you get both sides of the insight. Again, part of this is part of the problem of being in a modern culture. People are taught not to observe. They haven't learned skills. They don't know how to gain a sense of gauging what's enough, what's too much, what's too little. For all that we'd like to think that we're independent thinkers, we really are a herd. We depend on somebody else someplace to do our thinking for us, which is a bad foundation for the practice. When we come to the Dharma, on the one hand, yes, we are asked to have faith in the Buddha's awakening. We also have to realize that our understanding of what that means is pretty primitive. It comes out of ignorance. So we have to keep testing that understanding to see where the ignorance lies. Where our faith may be misguided. Misguided, not because anybody else out there is misguiding us, but we're misguiding ourselves. What this means is learning how to do something and then watch the results and develop your powers of judgment so you can begin to gauge when is the right time to act, when is the right time to be still, when is the right time to think, when is the right time to watch. Because it's in finding this balance that your discernment develops. Without that sense of balance, without that sense of time and place, 
there's no real discernment. There's just kind of a rote idea of what must be right, and you follow it blindly and don't look. And that doesn't gain you any genuine discernment at all. There's no way you're going to come to the end of suffering if you do things blindly. So experiment, watch, and then test the way you read the experiment to see if you really can trust it. And over time, your ability to read things will get better and better. Your sense of balance will get better and better. That's why it's called the middle path. The whole point of it is to find true balance. And as with any balance, sometimes the scales will swing in one direction, the other time they'll swing in another direction. But it's having an overall sense of when to lean to the left, when to lean to the right, and how not to lose your balance even when you're leaning a little bit. That's how you walk along the path. 